At Optavia, our mission is to offer the world lifelong transformation, one healthy habit at a time. The following audio contains the personal testimonials of independent coaches and clients within the Optavia community. Their results are based on the unique experiences of their journey. We cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. We hope these stories inspire you to continue your journey with or join Optavia, but please note they have not been verified and your individual journey to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you speak with a healthcare provider in the US or a doctor in Singapore and Hong Kong prior to beginning your journey with Optavia. Additionally, this audio may contain income or earning representations of some independent Optavia coaches. We cannot guarantee financial success. Success with Optavia is derived from successful sales efforts, which require hard work, diligence, skill, persistence, competence, and leadership. Optavia acknowledges that this audio may be accessible to Optavia coaches in the US, Hong Kong, and Singapore. For independent Optavia coaches operating in the US, please see the Optavia Income Disclosure Statement for statistics on actual earnings of US coaches under the U.S. Compensation Plan. Please note that the income disclosure statement only applies to independent Optavia coaches operating in the U.S. under the U.S. Compensation Plan and does not in any way constitute any representations as to actual or potential accrual of benefits for Hong Kong or Singapore coaches under the International Compensation Plan. Yours in health, the Optavia team. Hello, everybody. I was given the opportunity to lead this uh, the, night, the night before Thanksgiving last year, and I was super vulnerable about how I am not coming to this. Here, we'll, we'll go through these slides. We're going to talk about dealing with addictive food. I am Leslie Begin. This is my family. That is my husband. You will meet him a little later tonight. Um, and those are my six daughters. So you, I mean, some of you are counting them. I have six daughters. Um, this topic is a challenge for me, more than a challenge. This topic leads me to have a racing heart. I wish, um, when we talk about addictive foods, I was literally offended by this topic for a very long time. My first conversation with my coach, she was helping me to set a goal um, for how much weight I wanted to lose. And she said, you know, let's get a little further into the healthy BMI category because if Christmas comes and you decide to eat one cookie, we don't want you bumping up into the overweight category again. And she just moved on. But for me, I had an identity crisis and I literally almost quit program before I began because one cookie made no sense to me. Does anyone know what I mean by that? One cookie made no sense because cookies came in three for me, three. I don't ever remember eating just one cookie. I ate three cookies. And if that didn't satisfy me because the neurochemical cocktail in my brain had trouble with that, I wanted to add another cookie. But the cookies came in threes, so really I would eat six cookies. So a memory popped up on my Facebook. So this is a very, very, very personal issue for me. My husband, he'll talk later, chose sobriety over five years ago, and, and I chose sobriety without hitting a rock bottom from alcohol over five years ago. We have been in the recovery journey community, and I know I have a problem with addictive food, but I'm not coming to you from a purse place of perfection tonight. I'm coming to you, and I, battled with shame before doing this call. Because from November until now, when they asked me to do this call again, I thought, that's perfect. I will have nailed this for the last few months. I, I will have nailed it for those few months. I will come to them from a place of victory. I will be able to tell them, I got this under control. And guess what? 
A few weeks ago, some friends were in town. I had gone four weeks full on program, five and one. A few friends came in town. And we went out to dinner and this beautiful dessert was delivered to the table. And I thought, I've been four weeks on program. Just one bite won't hurt. Just one bite. It won't hurt. But I have a very high susceptibility to sugar addiction. And I ate sugar for probably four weeks after that every day. Not a full out binge, not the whole sleeves of Rick's crackers, not the whole package of Oreos because I won't, wouldn't bring them in my house. But I am still a person in progress. So in saying that, Tonight, I wish that you and I were sitting down in my white rocker gliders and having a cup of tea or a bottle of water, and we were looking eyeball to eyeball, and our hearts could connect, and we could have this conversation just us. I know my husband feels the same way, but this is what we've got. And so I want you to have that feeling I'm going to ask you some questions tonight. I want you to answer honestly. There are going to be moments in the next few minutes where it might hit you, something might hit you, and I want you um, to, if it goes, oh, I mean, to just write it down so you can think about it more, journal about it, process through it with your coach or friend later. So I want to jump into some content, some slides. Oh, I forgot we have a poll. Which best describes you, coach, client, or guest? We're going to have a poll pop up, but for sake of time, I'm going to keep going. We are discussing tonight's stuff, and I am literally quoting stuff out of Dr. A's Habits of Health, which is like our AA big book. If you have anything to do with the recovery community, this is your big book, and this is an even more powerful big book. You need these tools to get a healthy mind to support your healthy body and keep you on track okay that is what we do so that is um that's your big book you need these tools you need to be using these tools and i don't should on people but you should y'all um we are going to talk about a few things tonight this is our agenda and i'm jumping right into it i love um this is dr anderson who wrote these books and he says and i quote as i move the chat away Habits of disease can create instantaneous pleasure. How many of you feel instantaneous pleasure when that first sip of wine hits your palate? Honestly, how many of you feel instantaneous pleasure when you eat the Oreo, right? How many of you feel instantaneous pleasure when you continue to eat the Oreos? But ultimately, they'll lead to a result ultimate, uh, but they will ultimately result in significant consequences to your health and well being. So that's what we want to talk about. What I love about this picture, if you've spent any time in this life book or Dr. A's Habits of Health, you've seen it. Radiant health, healthy food, healthy choices, healthy habits lead to this radiant health. Unhealthy food truly just leads to chronic, chronic poor health. Bottom line, our program is incredible because it helps us to create radiant health, all of the components, all of the habits added together. So I wanna talk quickly about these three pieces. Now, this is coming straight from these two books. I am not the professional, Dr. A has studied this. Insatiable, let's talk about this because one of my favorite things that the Habits of Health System has done for me is it's helped me to realize it's not my fault. I don't need to be fixed. This is physiological. We experience insatiable hunger when it comes to addictive foods. What does that mean? It means you can't be satisfied. It's a hunger that cannot be satisfied. I am literally reading notes because I don't want to get it wrong, but we have this hormone in our body called leptin. Leptin is our natural hunger suppressant hormone, and it's released by fat cells to let the brain know that you're no longer hungry. Here's what happens. You eat sugar, or flour, re ultra refined sugar or flour products, which are our addictive foods, bottom line. You eat those and it 
completely blocks leptin from getting to your brain. Um, here's the deal. Our insulin goes up when we eat those foods. The insulin blocks the leptin. So our brain no longer gets the message, you're full, you're satisfied, you've had enough to tell us to stop. So it's not our fault. Our body was designed to do that. Here's what cravings and addictions are. It's just a neurochemical cocktail again. The next thing that happens is what they've noticed. Scientists have done MRIs on people who are eating ultra-refined sugar and flour products, which are the addictive foods. And what happened during those MRIs is the pleasure center of the brain lit up like fireworks. Literally, there's a picture in this book that shows a brain impacted by cocaine and a brain impacted by these ultra-refined sugars and flour products, and they look exactly the same. What happens is you eat it, and there's this hormone called dopamine. Dopamine is released with the expectation of a reward. So the moment you eat a cookie, your dopamine has already released in your head. A huge amount of dopamine is released to that, that amazing pleasure center of your brain. But the thing is, the dopamine peak is gone, and now you're seeking out the next high. What's going to give you the high? More dopamine, the expectation of the reward. So you eat another cookie. That's why you end up eating the whole row of Oreos, or I do because you are experiencing just a dopamine burst. That's natural, it's not your fault. This is how your body was created. So I wanna take you through, if you have your life book, I want you to turn to page 322. I have done, my life book is like covered with coffee stains. I have done element 16 like literally six times, maybe seven. So, I'm, if you don't have a life book, I'm gonna ask you questions, okay? I want you to just get a piece of paper, put a note in your phone. Your answer is gonna be rarely, occasionally, or daily. Rarely, occasionally, and daily, okay? I have 10 questions. I find it difficult to control how much I eat. I change it to sugar, how much sugar I eat. This is page 322 in your life book. I find it difficult to control how much sugar I eat, or I eat, or you can replace it with I drink alcohol if you want, since I have a lot of friends in recovery. Number two, and so you're answering rarely, occasionally, daily. I crash in the afternoon and have trouble waking up in the morning. That defines my whole life from before plan. Rarely, occasionally, daily. I have cravings for specific foods, rarely, occasionally, daily. I suffer from moodiness, headaches, and fogginess, rarely, occasionally, daily. When I only eat a moderate amount of food, sugar, alcohol, I'm not satisfied, or I crave more, rarely, occasionally, daily. I feel guilty after eating, Rarely, occasionally, daily. I eat even if I am not hungry because I crave a food. Rarely, occasionally, daily. I eat even if I'm not, oh, they okay, already did that. I eat large amounts of sugar to feel and feel powerless to stop. Or I drink large amounts of alcohol and feel powerless to stop. Or I eat large amounts of food and feel powerless to stop. Rarely, occasionally, daily. I crave carbohydrates like pasta, bread, white rice, or desserts, rarely, occasionally, daily. So we have a poll that I wanna put up. And um, this poll, I would love for you to add together, oops, we're going to this really quick. I meant to change that around. I skipped seven. <gasps> I'm sorry, thank you in the notes. Seven is, I spend a considerable amount of time thinking about food. Rarely, occasionally, daily. Okay, so I want you to add which ones did you have more than six? Did you have more than six rarely? That means low susceptibility. 
Do you have more than six occasionally? That's moderate susceptibility. And do you have more than six daily? That's high susceptibility. And now I'm gonna ask Rose to put up our poll. And in this poll, I just want you to classify your susceptibility to addictive food. And we're gonna see these results in a minute after my friend Molly comes on and shares her story of how she recognized that she had high susceptibility to addictive foods. <laughs> Molly, come on up. Ah, can you hear me? Yes. Hi there. Oh, you can go ahead there. After you're done, we're going to see your poll results. So jump right in. Okay. Hi guys. I'm Molly. It's so nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Boy, do I have a tale for you. So I started plan in October of, I'm sorry, November of 18. And the reason why is because I was turning 50 in March. So it was very event driven. All I cared about was my birthday party and I didn't want to look overweight, fluffy, whatever in the pictures. So I knew November I had enough time to make that happen, right? And I did, I'd lost, now it wasn't to my goal. I had lost about 23. Birthday was great, everything was fun, perfect, wonderful. I had done no, no, no mental work in the interim because I was just driven to that event. Now, the weird part is I knew about two weeks in that I wanted to coach. I just, I loved playing. I was like, ooh, I want to do this. You know, I was so driven because of my birthday. And I remember when Lene, Lene Rogers is my coach, love her, when we were talking about me coaching, I got scared because I knew if I decided to coach, that was gonna mean a lifelong accountability for my lifelong addiction to food. And that is scary. So birthday comes, I do no mental work. I slowly but surely start to gain weight back. This is as a coach. By about the end of the fall, I was living in New Orleans at the time. Now this is important because of the next part that I'm about to tell you. If you are from Louisiana, if you are from New Orleans, if you have visited, have you heard of Cafe Du Monde? If you do not know what Cafe Du Monde is, that is a place that serves beignets. If you do not know what beignets are, they are fried bread with sugar on them. So it's my kryptonite. It is bread, it is sugar, it's all of it. They come three to an order, three. I walked on over to Cafe Du Monde because it was by my house and I was upset about something. Again, no mental work had been done. I'm in line. So I'm thinking, I'm looking and I'm thinking, hmm, how many do I wanna order? So I'm like, one order's not enough. Get a little closer, two orders isn't enough. I get to the counter. I'll take five orders of beignets, please. So we can all do the math there, right? That's 15 beignets, 15. I get home, I ate two bags for sure, I think part of the third in one sitting. By the day's end, and I don't even mean like into midnight, I mean by like probably six o'clock, they were all gone, all of them. The next day, I told no one except for my best friend. She called me the next day, I told her what I did. And she said, well, I mean, weren't they good? Weren't they so good? Y'all, my answer, I, I was like, uh, no. 15 of anything is not good. They didn't even taste like anything anymore. Because all I was doing was trying not to feel upset. And like Leslie just talked about the dopamine that's what you're looking for. And as soon as you finish, you want more. I had not done the mental work. I finally realized that was the change that I had to do, even as a coach. 
our system, the habits of health that Dr. A has done in our community makes me want to cry. That is my dopamine. I have to have this community to be able to deal with this for the rest of my life. And as um, Leslie spoke about with AA, Optimia, I always say this, Optimia is my AA. The difference for me is I can't be anonymous. I have to own it. I have to tell people my deal. Tell people your deal. They want you to be better. They want you to succeed. They, they want you to get what you want. Tell your coach. If you need help, come to the community. That's what we're here for, and that's what makes us different. I know I will never do that again. I look at it so differently now. I eat to live. I do not live to eat. That is, I mean, I might as well be going and doing drugs under the bridge. I mean, that is the equivalent. And of course, I wasn't going to eat the stuff in Cafe Du Monde. I have to go to my house because it's, you know, the most shameful thing ever. So I'm not going to do that in front of anyone. And y'all, I told no one this story ever, and except for my best friend, until I shared it a couple of weeks ago. Now I'll tell anyone. I mean, I don't care. I mean, God, I don't even know how many people are on here listening to this nightmare, but I don't even care. I do not care because it is a story of freedom and truth. Just own your truth and share it. And coaching is my answer. And I am supposed to, I was scared when Lene asked me, because I am supposed to be accountable my whole life. That is what I'm supposed to do in this vehicle. I um, hope this helps. I hope it speaks to you. I think we've all done this probably since we're all on this call. Um, thank you for listening. And we all got this. Dig into thank the community and you got it. I love it. Thank you, Molly. And I know that takes courage um, to come on here and share that story, but it will set so many people free to share their own truth. And so we want to see the poll results. So Rose, if you can show us the poll results, yes. we, we want to know what the poll results are. And then Trey begin. Um, I would, that's my husband. We do life together. We partner in business together and raising six kids together. And um, I could be, I couldn't be more proud to call this man my husband. Um, he chose sobriety. Oh, there we go. A lot of high, 40% high susceptibility, 41% moderate, 16% low, and they're not sure. Some other people are not sure. We get them, huh? So Trey, um, go ahead and share your story and share some of your, what you've learned over the last few years. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Molly, too. That was so, so great to hear that and to hear your story and know that your story is setting other people free. There's 6,600 people on there, probably thousands other that will watch this another time. And, um, and that story is going to set thousands of people free um, from, from what they're facing in their life today. And, um, and you know, my, my story is not about food. It's about, it's about alcohol. And um, even though it's not about food, it is a story about addiction. And, um, and, and what I wanted to talk to you about today is because um, Leslie and I have gone through this life and this journey together and lived it out loud, we've been asked many, many times how we've done it. How has it happened? And often we don't like talking about ourselves, but this is one area that we um, we freely give advice, even though sometimes it's not asked, <laughs> asked of us. We freely give advice in this area um, because what we've recognized is that I know what I'm addicted to. Molly understands her addiction. Leslie understands her addiction tendencies. And I am convinced that every single person has an addictive tendency. You just might not have found what yours is yet. And it could be to something great. It could be to something terrible. And maybe you're ashamed of sharing it. And maybe you share it with everyone. Wherever you're at right now, I want you to know that you're not alone. That there are many other people right there with you. And, and that can relate with you. And sometimes just what someone else is waiting for is someone else to step up and share. And that brings freedom in those areas. And in my life, that's exactly what happened to me. 
is that, you know, there were struggles. There was, the, I'm not going to share the whole story. It is a very long story. And, but it, it sim simply put, I came to a rock bottom um, five years ago through, um, out, through addiction with alcohol. And through that rock bottom, it, it helped me realize, and, and I never, I, I always say that I'm, I'm never thankful for my past. I'm not thankful for the decisions that I, I made but I'm thankful that I learned through all of this thing. I'm thankful that my past was my university. It, it made me, it built me into, it built our marriage, it built our family into the family that we are today, but it did not define our future and it didn't define our current reality. And what we had to do at that moment, and thankfully we had Optavia in our lives at the time, we, um, we just did what Optavia does. And we decided that we needed a community. And we didn't have that community of support around us at the time. We, we did have some, but not anybody that I was willing to be truthful and honest with at the time. And so I found some people that I could trust and that I loved and that I could be truthful and honest with. And they surrounded me. And they surrounded my family and they cared enough about me and they cared about, enough about my family to help us through this. And I had to seek that out. But the beautiful part about Optivia is we have that built in. You have that built in. We have that built in here. And all you have to do is have the courage to speak out and say, and talk to your coach, talk to someone, another client, <laughs> talk to anybody about what you're dealing with. Go on your client support pages and speak about what you're dealing with, your emotions, what you're dealing with, because there's freedom that's on the other side of that. And the freedom is for you and it's for others. Because what happens is when you are vulnerable and you're transparent, you give other people an opportunity and a place to step into that are not willing. They don't have the strength. They don't have the courage to step up themselves, but you've given them a place because what I've, the biggest thing that I've learned of all of these things is number one, it's a community. Number two, it's hard work. Number three is that my future is not defined by my past. Sorry. I always get emotional at this part. And number four is that if I have the courage to share, someone will be impacted by this because I, I have no clue who is on the other side of this screen who is silently suffering with something that they don't have the courage to step up and talk about. And if I've got to be the one on this screen looking like an idiot crying because of what I went through to give you the courage to step up and be that person, to grow into that person that's made for greatness that I know that you're made to be, I'm okay with that. I'm okay. Thank you. So this is the encouragement. That, thank you, Trey. So this is the encouragement that I want to leave you with. If you can be addicted to something, if you can have a high susceptibility or a moderate susceptibility to being addicted to a substance, then you can be addicted to success. You can get intense and obsessed about your health journey. You can obsessively read through this book in a month to brainwash yourself. This is literally washing your brain with all kinds of new healthy information. You can dig into this book. This is your mental work. You can engage in community. That's your meeting. 
engage in your Facebook page, engage on these, listen to these on repeat in your earbuds while cooking dinner or sweeping the floor or on your Bluetooth speaker, you can start rewiring your brain. And Dr. A gives us all the tools to do it. And I'm not going through the last two slides. Go read the book. The two, section 2.5 gives you the, the plate system that he has, which will teach you how to rewire what you're doing. Our system, our, our program is phenomenal for retraining your taste buds, retraining your mind, retraining your emotions. You know what you have to do? If you have a high susceptibility to addictive food, you have to start coaching. You have to pay it forward to somebody. You sponsor someone else. Because by doing that increases your accountability. It increases your resolve. It holds you accountable to leading someone else. You only have to be one day into this program to lead someone else to choose help. And you've got to start being courageous, like Trey said. You've got to post on Facebook. Some of your friends are gaining weight, feeling ashamed, and you have the power to set them free by being honest and real, vulnerable and transparent, and leading from a place of strength, saying, I am determined. Stand up for yourself, to yourself and to others. I am determined to make myself and my health a priority. I'm going to help you to do that too. Let's do this together. Thank you for joining us tonight, but it is an honor and a privilege to have a racing heart. It is an honor and a privilege for Trey to serve, Trey and I to serve in this way and to invite our friends who lead from that same place of vulnerability. And I'm thankful that you spent 30 valuable minutes with us. At Optavia, our mission is to offer the world lifelong transformation, one healthy habit at a time. The prior audio contained the personal testimonials of independent coaches and clients within the Optavia community. Their results are based on the unique experiences of their journey. We cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. We hope those stories inspire you to continue your journey with or to consider joining Optavia. But please note that they have not been verified and your individual journey to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you speak with a healthcare provider in the US or a doctor in Singapore and Hong Kong prior to beginning your journey with Optavia. Additionally, this audio may have contained income or earning representations of some independent Optavia coaches. We cannot guarantee financial success. Success with Optavia is derived from successful sales efforts, which require hard work, diligence, skill, persistence, competence, and leadership. Optavia acknowledges that this audio may be accessible to Optavia coaches in the US, Hong Kong, and Singapore. For independent Optavia coaches operating in the US, Please see the Optavia Income Disclosure Statement for statistics on actual earnings of U.S. coaches under the U.S. Compensation Plan. Please note that the Income Disclosure Statement only applies to independent Optavia coaches operating in the U.S. under the U.S. Compensation Plan and does not in any way constitute any representations as to actual or potential accrual of benefits for Hong Kong or Singapore coaches under the International Compensation Plan. Yours in health. The Octavia team.